Hey everyone, today I'm making another Xenomorph head using my templates. Link below. And I know a lot of you are probably going, wait what, again? A and yeah, uh, again, I, I like Alien. Kind of my thing. Did you think I was going to stop at one? But right off the bat I want to acknowledge, yes I did make a Xenomorph video already. This footage you're about to see was shot months ago for Etsy. But Etsy's video player is just in the stone age compared to YouTube. It only allows low resolution footage, so I have to do extra work to dumb down my clear pristine video just for Etsy sees flash animation code and my customers are of course having a hard time following it because it's essentially like watching a gif or like late 80s anime and i've been redirecting them to the xenomorph build but that's just as hard to follow because i was figuring it out while it was working so i'm just all over the place in that video it's not like a clear concise a to b to c set of instructions it's like putting together an ikea shelf so i decided to just post the high res version of this template video to youtube for everybody's benefit just as a freebie for everybody. So here we go. For this build, I used EVA foam, EVA foam dowels, EVA foam triangle strips, craft foam, half cylinder foam, clay foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, pool noodles, flex tubing, my xenomorph templates, link below, paint, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. So, once you've downloaded the PDF, make sure to load cardstock in your printer. It's just thick paper. You can get it at any office supply store. Then print out the templates. Next, cut out the pieces, including the registration marks. Uh, those are little triangles. Those will help you line up the pieces later. Oh, here's a little random tip. If you cut outside the lines, the xenomorph will be larger, which is great if you're like seven feet tall. If you cut inside the lines, then the xenomorph head will be smaller, which is good for, you know, kids trick-or-treating, I guess. Then tape together the segment pieces. This is what they should look like all together. Then, trace them onto floor mat foam using a marker. This piece that I'm starting with is actually one of the last pieces, arguably, that you'll need to do. It's the underside of the back of the dome, which I think in one of the movies it's not even there. So, you know, you can take it or leave it if you're a first-time foam maker. I don't remember which movie. I want to say Alien 3. I don't know. It has to be symmetrically mirrored, so I flipped it. When you're finished tracing, cut out the pieces using a box cutter. The sharper your cutting tool is, the cleaner your cut cut is going to come out, which in turn will cut down on the sanding later on. That's why I'm constantly sharpening the knife as I work. Th this sharpener is kind of retro. You can just as easily use a kitchen knife sharpener, although I'd wash it before and after, but that's just me. In a pinch, you can get away with using scissors, but you'd probably have to do some additional sand. I mean, I'm sure you'd have to do some additional sanding later on. For the ends, it's fine though, because those are just gonna get covered up. The main pieces are too long to fit on the main sheet of foam, so I didn't tape them together in the middle. There are larger foam sheets out there that you can buy, which will cut down on the segmenting that you'll have to do, but floor mat foam is the easiest to get a hold of. It's just the most accessible, which is why I'm using it for this demo. Oh, you know what, I should probably mention that you can buy EVA foam in these quarter inch thick rolls, which is technically big enough in terms of surface area, but I'm not crazy about it. I think that it's so thin, the diamond pattern on the back is always going to show through. So I'm only mentioning it to tell you not to buy it. I've used it once and I'm never looking back. Well, I mean, watching the footage from five years ago, so technically looking back. These pieces can't be mirrored while still having them attached, like the smaller piece. So in order to get the opposite side, just flip it over, but put some space in between the two pieces. Trace it and cut it out. Then repeat the process for the skinnier pieces that make up the top of the dome, top, top center. Dorsal? Sure. This is what they look like when they're all cut out. Next, they have to be heat formed. For that, I'm using a heat gun, also known as a paint peeler, and slowly heat it up both sides of the foam. I always get asked if a hair dryer could be used instead, and I don't know. I've never tried. I was fortunate enough to have a, a well-stocked workshop growing up, so the heat gun was the first option. I wouldn't think that you'd be able to use a hair dryer because heat guns get way hotter. In fact, if you heat form for too long, then you can actually burn the foam. So be careful. If you're not sure, do the majority of the heat forming on the pattern side because if it burns just a little bit, it's gonna be on the inside. No one's gonna notice. Once it's heated up, bend it until it retains a curve. 
you may have to set the piece inside of a curved object such as a pipe or a bowl until it cools in order to aid this process. Next, you have to apply contact cement to the edges. Then, wait 12 to 14 minutes for the glue to become tacky. Then you can attach the pieces together. Because these pieces are so big, you may have to do only a couple at a time because it takes time to apply the glue to so much surface area. A lot of people don't factor in application time to their dry time. Now, the fumes from contact cement are flammable and not great to breathe. So you should do this in a well-ventilated area, such as a garage, while wearing a mask, or even just outside. And then it'll have to sit and air out for a few hours at least. I like to give it a day, day and a half. This piece right here is what a lot of people are having trouble with. Because in my first Alien build, I reverse engineered it from a bike helmet. And I actually simplified it in the templates, so visually there's not a lot for people to go on. And the entire reason for the existence of this video. As it comes together, it might be a bit lumpy, but don't worry, it'll all even out in the end. When the two halves were built, I connected them. The heat forming process by its nature deforms the foam, so if you get a little misalignment and have to cut a quarter inch or a half inch out of the middle in order to create one smooth edge, j just go for it. It won't make or break the project. In fact, if you want to make the carapace shorter, then yeah, absolutely do that. And to make it longer, you can actually add in a horseshoe shaped shim, like a fender. Then I did a quick reheating of the foam, which will even out some of the lumps. After I had waited a while, I glued this piece into the hood. All this is, is a platform on which to attach the teeth and lip details. I also attached a PVC pipe just behind that to act as a hinge for the jaw. I do get a lot of questions about the jaw, and I think that's because the design of the alien changes a little bit in every single movie that comes out, particularly the jaw and the side details. I designed mine to be slimmed down and elongated, more like a jaw bone than a surface piece. I did this so that I would have room under the surface of the alien's skin for pulleys to animate the lips. That skin was made out of a flexible spandex material because if I were to make them out of foam, then they, they'd be frozen. The lips certainly wouldn't be able to move, but that's a creative choice. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. This one I'm building as a static wall mount. So I'm gonna show you how to build that detail without all the complicated pulleys and things. Oh, these by the way, this is a mold of my teeth. In front of the jaw, I attached a strip of foam for the top row of teeth to attach to. Just in front of that, I attached an EVA foam bevel strip. I'm only doing this to keep from sanding. In my last Xenomorph build, I sanded it into a curve with my rotary tool. But that kicks up a lot of dust, and it's hard to get mask filter cartridges right now, so anywhere I can cut down on sanding, I'm gonna go for it. I'm using super glue right here just for convenience. It's great for details, but it's not flexible like contact cement is, so I only use it for details or things I'm not gonna wear. So close. You'll notice behind the jaw that I put half circle shaped ribs inside of the head to help it hold its shape. In my opinion, this is the only internal support that I think is necessary to keep the carapace from deforming on its own. I mean, my first one's still intact, but feel free to add more ribs if you want. Then I added an underplate to the jaw. I'm using hot glue here, which is kind of a gamble, but I'm gonna reinforce it in just a minute. Yeah, here we go. I added a larger curved bevel to both strengthen the seam and give a more organic look. You can get these bevels at craft stores in the cosplay section. I also added a bevel to the top palette, which I'm just now noticing that I attached off center. I can't believe I did that. I mean, luckily foam is forgiving. I can just carve out a section later, but if I had noticed it while doing this, then I could have saved myself a lot of aggravation. It just hurts to look at, you know? I carved the teeth out of scrap bits of EVA foam, mostly puzzle pieces, at least for the front ones. I started with the top row. While the front four have to be on the outside of the plate, the rows narrow as as they go back so that they will align with the bottom row and end up on the inside of the palette. I had to redo the sides a couple of times until I got it right. Then I did the bottom row of teeth. It's much easier than the top row because unlike the top row, these can all go on the outside of the jaw. But in order to get them to flare out, I added a triangular foam bevel strip. Although I guess a curved one would work. Depends on what you have. Unlike the top row, I hot glued those teeth in place. So the hot glue, if it's all that's available to you, you can use it to sculpt gums and other organic shapes, which I did in my original Alien, but it's kind of a waste of hot glue. So instead, I'm using foam clay that was sent to me by Cosplay Apprentice. Probably because he saw me wasting hot glue, am I right? Or marketing, you know, product placement, that thing I should be doing. So in my kyber crystals, here I'm attaching a palette to the roof of the mouth so that I can get the top and bottom to line up. 
I thought I could get away with using a carapace rib, but you'll notice I had to cut out a dart after the fact to make it narrower. Don't know why I didn't cut that in the middle. I used hot glue to strengthen the seam, hide the dart, and draw veins because why not? Then I reattach the top row of teeth so that they line up with the bottom ones when the mouth is closed. You'll notice that I also evened out the off-center palette by slicing out a chunk with a razor knife. I'm going to use more foam bevels as well as foam clay. First, I wet the surface of the foam. A little bit of water will help the clay stick. I rolled a glob of clay into a rope and just smooshed it in. It took several globs, so I rolled an even longer rope for the lower gums and smooshed that in as well. You'll want to use slightly more than you think you'll need because it will shrink a little bit as it dries. Next, I made the cheek muscles. As I've mentioned, it varies based on what movie you're watching, but I've most consistently seen that there's at least three cheek muscles on each side and they crisscross. I'm blending the first one into the lip by using a foam bevel as its core. Once it was secured, I added foam clay details to it at the point where it attaches to the jaw. These are gonna make up the veins and muscles. I also added bevels to the back of the jaw. I made more veins to cover up the seams. I did the same to the other side, also using hot glue to draw in some other veins. I covered the main seams on the carapace with Alex Fast Dry Putty. It's supposed to dry in 20 minutes, but I find that it takes longer the thicker on you apply it. So in general, try to get the seams connected connected evenly to begin with, and you'll save yourself a lot of time and trouble in the long run. In general, I find that I have to do three layers applied over the course of the day. As for the foam clay, that takes a day to dry out. Nom nom nom. When it did dry, I filled in the seams where it lifted due to shrinkage and added a lower lip. Then I added some conduit above the mouth, but below the carapace. And I made the side details out of pool noodles. To get the ribbed look, I added more bevels. Usually there are a lot of additional details here that feed into the neck, but I'm not building a neck for this particular piece, and honestly, a lot of those details don't hold up to scrutiny in bright light. I mean, one's very obviously a femur. So, I'm gonna omit those details on this particular version. You guys can do whatever you want. Go nuts. When those details were finished, I got to work sanding. This is a very time-consuming process, so be patient, take breaks, also wear a mask. You don't want to breathe this stuff. You don't want to breathe any dust, really. I rounded the horns of the chin down into ridges, and that should be the last of the sculpting work. It's been over a day now, so the foam clay is fully dried out, which means I can begin painting. To prep for paint, I give it a very quick blast of the heat gun. This seals up the surface of the EVA foam, making it less absorbent when I paint. EVA foam acts like a sponge, partially absorbing the first few layers of paint, so you're going to need to do at least three. Normally I wouldn't use Plastidip, it just doesn't have as much coverage per can as house paint does. All I'm trying to do here is even out all the colors to make it easier to understand for first time builders. So I'm hesitant to tell you to use Plasti Dip because it'll still take multiple coats and multiple cans. And depending on where you are in the world, it can get expensive. Oh, and not to mention, it is an aerosol. So in certain areas, it will start to eat through the foam of the pool noodles. And that's kind of the whole point of this project was to show you don't need to make this out of styrofoam. Well, this is, pool noodles are kind of chemically close to styrofoam, just saying. Oh, but last time I used pipe insulation, maybe that would have been better. I don't know, this whole thing's a proof of concept. I like to do the first layer in flat black because it will help me see any mistakes that I might have made and might need to sand away. Also, that first layer, it's just always getting absorbed. Never have I done one layer of gloss onto EVA foam and got it to, you know, actually be gloss. So there's no need to waste it the first time around. The next two layers will need to be gloss paint, however, in order to get that shine. This will give it a wet look without it actually being wet. According to my research, the teeth are silver, but again, changes from film to film to do whatever. But if you happen to go with silver, I'm using Molotow Chrome. And that was it. Where you go from here is up to you. Me personally, I already have an alien costume, so this is going above my TV. And that's how you make a xenomorph head. For costume, static display, wall mount, or what have you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying the templates. If this is the first you're hearing of the templates and you'd like to try this build, the template link is below. If you still have questions, then you may want to check out my original xenomorph build or any of my other EVA foam builds. All right, now I've got to get back to building my hydro stomper. I've literally been editing this in between coats of paint on that. So back to work. Happy crafting. See you later.